Welcome to the October 2020 General Meeting of the Dayton Microcomputer Association. My name is Peter Hess. I'm the DMA's current Vice President. Uh, it's been my pleasure for the past two years to open our monthly general meetings for the entertainment, enjoyment, and enlightenment of our members and guests. For some time, we have had people suggest that we begin our monthly general meetings with our presentation instead of our organization's announcements. So today, for many reasons, we're going to try this again with our guest presentation being at the beginning of our meeting. Please let us know how you feel about this relatively minor experimental change through our Contact Us form on our website, www.dma.org. If you're not yet a member, to begin your annual membership, please print a membership application form from our website and mail it to us along with a check for only $25. By supporting the DMA, we can continue to do what we do. And trust me, that is much more than what is obvious. Now today, I have uh, Bob, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll let you pronounce your last name. Um, <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't wanna hurt that. Bob G. Bob G, okay, we got Bob G. Uh, and Bob uh, talks to computer clubs and other groups in the United States and internationally where people are interested in learning more about cyber and personal security. He simplifies, clarifies, and demystifies your devices, gadgets, or technology. So have a safe, secure, and enjoyable internet experience. Um, Bob is also going to be uh, uh, involved in the uh, APCUG uh, virtual meeting, their annual meeting, uh, which will be this Saturday, I believe, uh, next Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday, yep. Yeah. And um, uh, I know you're going to be present at that, and there's going to be presentations along with that. Later on, I'm going to be talking about the meetings uh, and uh, uh, breakout sessions that uh, will be uh, at that meeting. I'm going to hand this over to Bob right now, and, um, and it's all yours, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start by sharing my screen. Tell you what, I'll take care of those, those, uh, those hey, admissions. You got one coming in now. I know, but I, the pop, I didn't get the pop up. I got him. Okay. <laughs> Prior to COVID, kids were starting to move back in with their parents. Of course, if these two still have parents to move in with, God bless all four of them. Warning, there's an email going around offering processed pork, gelatin, and salt in a can. If you get this email, don't open it. It is spam. <laughs> Staying safe and secure, a great way to start is through the use of Avast, and I don't care what, which one of their versions you use. I personally happen to like their free version. You live so much of your life online, between your friends, your career, and your funny videos. You might not be thinking about your security, but we are. We're Avast, the global leader in consumer cybersecurity. We offer cutting edge security and privacy products to keep you safe from malware, ransomware, Trojans, spam, phishing, and other threats on your mobile phone, your Mac, or your PC. Our VPN software makes sure your connection is always safe, encrypted, and secure, no matter where you are. And we keep you safe from the latest browser-based threats with a vast, secure browser. We even secure your home network and all the different connected things that are on it. You benefit from the power of the Avast cybersecurity network, made up of hundreds of millions of U's, because there's safety in numbers. Avast sees emerging threats and stops them on day zero, before others even know they exist. So you're free to live your digital life and leave the security to us. Take charge of your security and privacy today with solutions from Avast. In my promo, I promise to simplify, clarify, and demystify your computers while staying safe and secure on all of your devices. 
and I always try to keep my promises. Two things I want to point out on this slide. Make sure that your application uh, software is always of the highest quality. And every system, I don't care what operating system you use, has to have a reliable backup. If you don't have a backup and something happens to the main unit, you're going to wind up in hot water. In this case, something much worse. Whoop. Something to think about the next time you visit your shrink. It also points out the importance of paying attention to details. And anytime you're on the internet, details are very important. Psychotherapist is one word. As I said, details are very important. Install solid security software on every computer and device. Use strong and unique passwords. Only download programs and apps from trusted sources. Employ a virtual private network. Think twice before opening attachments, following links, or sharing sensitive information. Eight essentials of secu secure computing. If you're using a browser, make sure it's a secure browser. This is especially important when you do your banking and shopping. A vast secure browser totally isolates you from everything else while you're doing your banking and shopping and you're in banking mode. Use an ad blocker. The last thing you want is to be on the internet and be bombarded with ads. You might accidentally click on one of them. And a malware. Your modern antivirus program not only protects you against viruses, trojans, and rootkits, but it also protects you all against all other forms of malware. Actually, malware is an umbrella term that covers everything harmful to your computer. Use a password manager. Using a password manager means that you don't have to use the same password for everything that requires a password. And you should be using a different one for everything that requires a password. Use a VPN, virtual private network. If you're using a VPN, you're safe even though your internet connection may not be. As I said before, it's important that you create a regular image backup. Data encryption. The easiest way is through the use of a VPN. A healthy paranoia simply points out that sometimes it's a good thing to be suspicious. Public Wi-Fi has gotten safer over the years, but only because of the use of HTTPS. For maximum protection on public Wi-Fi networks, a VPN is still recommended. When you use a VPN, you connect to a sim, sim single VPN server and all of your system traffic is routed through that encrypted tunnel to the server. The public Wi-Fi network you're connecting to sees a single connection, your VPN connection, and no one can even see which websites you're connecting to. The VPN that I use comes from Avast, does an excellent job of hiding my location, encrypts everything before it leaves my computer and it doesn't get unencrypted until just before it gets to its destination. So if someone intercepts and steals that information, it's totally useless to them because it's fully encrypted. They don't have a key. They can't unlock it. This, however, is a paid product. So if you want to use it, you have to pay for it. If you're looking for free VPNs, there are quite a few of them. This is just a sample. But usually the free ones have some restrictions. They may limit the amount of data they'll encrypt. They may limit the number of connections that you can use encrypted. They'll have ads in it and all other kinds of annoyances. After all, they want to sell you their paid version. Companies use data gathered from cell towers, ambient Wi-Fi, and GPS. But the location in industry has a much more precise and unobtrusive tool. They're called Bluetooth beacons, and they can track you to within inches. 
Bluetooth, technology for connecting everything from wireless earphones to car entertainment systems. It's used for data transfer and many other things. But Bluetooth is also a hacker haven. Recommendation is when not in use, turn it off. If you're on an Android device, there's a vulnerability if you're using your Android device and the operating system is older than version 10. You could be within uh, close proximity to someone else and if your Bluetooth is on, they could steal everything from your device. So make sure that your device at least is running version 10, which came out back in February. Actually, 11 has already been released. This is a vulnerability only that only affects those on an Android device. If you're on an iOS device, this does not affect you. Ransomware, be aware. More and more municipalities are getting hit by ransomware and are paying that ransom and paying is never a good idea and it doesn't guarantee recovery. The only sure way to protect yourself against ransomware and hardware failure is to back up your system. Alexa, turn on. I'm having In my house, every Saturday night, when I finish for the day, the first thing I do is take the system offline. And I do that by simply turning on airplane mode. That gets rid of my connection to the internet. Then I plug in my external hard drive. During the night, an image is created. The next morning, Sunday morning, after the image is finished, first thing I do is disconnect that external hard drive. Then I go back on the internet. Never ever leave the device on which you create the image attached to your computer. Because if you get hit with CryptoLocker, it not only encrypts your computer, but it will also encrypt that external device on which you're creating your image. And the last thing you want is to have an encrypted image. It'll do you absolutely no good. A great place to get programs that you're installing on your system is a site called Night Night. Especially helpful if you've just done a, an update or have gotten a new computer and you have lots of your favorite programs to install. The next little video will show you why you should be using and how you use it. Night Night is a place where you can select many of the programs that you use nice thing is no toolbars no add-ons no malware and anything you select from here you can run again later to check for updates this tells you something about night night and when you go further down you see here is a whole list of all different types of programs in all different categories pick out those that you use since this is a clean install of Windows, it has the Edge browser. My favorite happens to be Google Chrome. So that's one of the items I've picked up in imaging. I like Earth and View, Avast Antivirus, Malware Bytes, 7-Zip, Revo Uninstaller. Those are the ones I've checked. You pick out your favorites. Once that's done, click on the button that says Get Your Night Night. This will download all the installation files, will then one at a time install them and the same little get your night night you can run it at any time and it will update these programs that you've installed should a new version come out a quick way to install your favorite programs after you've done a clean install unchecky a little program that sits in your system tray and it has your back anytime you install a program because if that program you install comes along with some garbage, some add-ons, it will warn you and give you the opportunity to uncheck and prevent the installation of the garbage. You should always use a custom install, but if you don't and you use the default install, then at least have unchecky as one of the tools to have your back to make sure garbage does not get on your system. Avast Quick Tips, Episode 3. 
Never unintentionally live a double life. You check your email. That's a compelling subject line. Open it. There's a suspicious looking link in there, but it sure looks exciting. It just needs some personal details. Name, address, first pet's name. You're a winner, right? Psych, it was a phishing link and you took the bait. Some woman in Norway just stole your identity <laughs> and your savings. Congratulations, you're now living a double life as a Norwegian woman named Aspjorn. Bushly! Don't take risks with your online security. Channel your inner English teacher. Hackers often use poor grammar in phishing emails. Make sure every link is HTTPS and the URL isn't weird or misspelled. Or let a powerful anti-spam do it for you. Anti-spam can flag or delete any dangerous and annoying phishing emails. So the only life you get to live is your own. A vast quick tip number three. Download a vast free antivirus to stay safe from phishing scams. Get free phishing protection with a vast free antivirus at avast.com. Phishing campaigns usually come from brands we know. And what you see listed here are the 10 most used companies in those phishing attempts. Usually you get an email and it usually tells you that there's a problem with your account. In the phishing attempt, they make it easy. They put a link in there or a phone number. Click on the link or call that phone number to straighten out the problem. <clears throat> Unfortunately, if you click that link or call that phone number, that's when your problem is going to start because it's not coming from the company you think sent it to you. They've spoofed the website and their logo, and they've gotten very, very good at doing that. You think it's a genuine article when it really is not. In a genuine attempt to let you know there's a problem with an account, or the only thing they usually do is tell you there's a problem with the account, please contact us to fix the problem. The onus of contacting in a genuine article is up to you. In a phishing attempt, they always make it easy by providing a link. But as soon as you click the link, you're now in touch with that cyber crook and all the information you pass along is to that crook. So be very careful. Even though it looks genuine, if you aren't sure it actually is genuine, the best thing you can do is on your own, call that company to verify that email. 99.9% .9 of the time, they'll tell you the email did not come from them. Scams, especially those offering help to fix problems on your computer, happen all the time. You even get them on your home phone number. Somebody will call up and say they're from Microsoft. They discovered a virus on your computer. You're infecting the rest of their customers. They want to help you clean up your computer. No, they want to clean up and get to all your information. There's no way that Microsoft or anybody else knows that you have a problem with your computer. The only one that does is you when the problem happens. And it's then up to you to contact somebody to get help with the problem. If somebody calls you to offer his help out of the blue, they're not tech support, they're mind readers. Hang up the phone and that ends that scam. If you get something unfamiliar in an email, don't click on any links, don't call any phone numbers, put it in the trash. That's where it belongs. Never ever turn control of your computer over to a third party. The only person you should ever grant remote access to is the same person you would permit to take your computer out of your home with its password. If you trust the person to do that, then it's also okay to give them remote access. If you don't, don't turn it over to them because it won't take them long and they'll have all the information that they're looking for from your computer. Pop-ups, when you're doing a search, if you're getting pop-ups, number one, something's wrong. But if you are getting pop-ups, don't click on links within the pop-ups, don't call any of the phone numbers, and then get some help and find out why you're getting those pop-ups, because you should not be getting them. When you're searching for something online, whether it's for tech support or anything else, realize that the top search result is not necessarily the safest one to act on. They made it to the top of the list because they paid the most 
most amount of money, not because they're the most reliable choice. If you're looking for tech support, the best place to get it is through a recommendation from a friend. If you do have to get it through the internet, then be very careful and do lots of checking before you choose a company. Identity theft, an excellent place to get information on the latest scams and an excellent place to get help if you've had your identity stolen is from a site called idtheftcenter.org. It's a nonprofit. They don't charge for their services. The only thing they do is help you recoup if you've had your identity stolen. Unfortunately, our passwords get stolen all the time. A website that we frequent gets hacked and now your information is in the hands of that hacker. Avast offers a website, their hack check website, and this is how you use it. Avast hack check and how to use it. Once you go to the website, put in the email address for which you want to check for possible hacks. Click on check now. It gives you the results. It also tells you to go check that email because Avast has now sent you a reply to that email address that you used to check. So the next step is to go to your email account and see the reply that you've received from Avast. This is the email I received. It tells me to change my password now. And you'll notice you can't see what the password is but that button on the bottom that says show details, once we click it, we'll get redirected to another site. At that website, it will show you the leaked password and next to it, you see what looks like a little eye. If you click on that eye, it reveals that password that's been leaked. If that's still your current password, you better hurry up and change it. If you've already changed that password, it's perfectly okay at this point now to mark it as resolved, which is what I'll be doing. That's what it takes to use Avast's website to check for compromised passwords, hacked passwords. McShield, a little tool that checks for boot sector infections. Anytime you insert a flash drive, memory card from your camera or an external hard drive. Your antivirus program by default only checks for things that you open on those external devices. Default settings doesn't check every part of that external drive. So you use a combination of McShield to check for boot sector infections and then your antivirus automatically will check anything that you access on those external devices. You could of course make a change in your antivirus program and tell it before I get access to that external device, check every part of it. The problem is that if you have an, a large external hard drive and you've told your antivirus to check every bit of it before you get access, you might be waiting for a half an hour or longer. So the smart thing to do is McShield checks for boot sectors and then your antivirus by default automatically will check anything that you access on that device. A quick way to be fully protected. CCleaner, great little tool to help clean out all the garbage left over when you visit the internet or use any of the programs on your computer. I personally like to run CCleaner on demand. I don't want it to run in the background. I also have some other changes that I like to make and the next video will show you how I make the changes to CCleaner before I actually start to use it. This little tutorial will cover the installation of CCleaner version 571 and some privacy and other setting changes after the installation that should be followed. Number one, always use custom. Default will install whatever the company wants to install. Customize will allow you to choose what to install and what to bypass. I personally don't need a desktop shortcut. All the other options are useful and will stay. Click on more. I want it to be installed just for me since I'm the only one on this computer. Now we can go ahead and hit the install. Bypass viewing. Next we'll select run CCleaner. Close this one up. Options. Privacy. And what you want to uncheck is help improve the app upgrades. 
and offers from third parties. That will stop the pop-ups. One more thing to do in the options. I like to use my CCleaner on demand. I don't want it to be resident. I don't want it to automatically do any cleaning for me. So to fix that, go into smart cleaning and uncheck tell me when there are junk files to clean and uncheck enable smart cleaning yes it'll warn you because it likes to be resident i don't want it that way i'll do my cleaning on demand when i want to clean garbage are you sure you want to do this the answer is yes that takes care of all the changes that i'm going to make you are now ready to use CCleaner, and I recommend that you use the default settings. They're perfectly safe. They'll clean out all the garbage for you, and you'll have probably a slightly faster running computer. That's it for the settings, changes, and the custom installation of CCleaner. Unchecky. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unlocker, a little program that helps you bypass program in use message that quite often comes up, especially when you're trying to un uninstall a pesky program, probably a program you shouldn't have installed in the first place. And that message comes up because part of the program is used by the system. And as long as it's being used by the system, you can't remove it. If Unlocker is installed, it will allow you to close the parts used by the system, and you'll then be able to get rid of that program and uninstall it. Recuva helps you to recover something you deleted in error. Usually comes in handy if you deleted it and didn't realize that you had done that until some time in the future. It's easy to recover something if you immediately realized I made a mistake, you just get it back, no problem. But if a month down the road, all of a sudden you realize what happened to that picture? Well, with Recuva, number one, it makes it easy for anyone to use because it breaks things down into categories. And then if you're looking for a picture that got accidentally deleted, just check off pictures, hit the next button, and it will then show you all of the pictures that uh, uh, cap it's capable of recovering. Just because you delete it doesn't mean it's gone. Unless it's actually physically overridden on the hard drive, it can be recovered and that usually takes quite a while before something cannot be recovered. Passwords. They need to be long and strong. I changed my password to incorrect. So whenever I forget <laughs> what it is, the computer will say your password is incorrect. This may make it easy to remember your password, but it will not keep you safe or secure. These are the 10 most used passwords worldwide. They've been the same 10 most used passwords for eons because people don't learn. These are not really passwords. They could be broken in less than a fraction of a second. It also isn't safe to write down your password and attach it to your refrigerator. Especially now when we have smart refrigerators, you don't know where that password will wind up. What you should be doing is using a password manager. Password manager means you have to remember one password and that's the password to get into your password manager. It can do all the rest for you. It can make up strong passwords. It can fill in all the information for you once it knows the information. But just remember, don't forget the password you need to get into the password manager. On the left, you see a listing of some of the cross-platform free and paid for password managers. Cross-platform means that you can use them on all operating systems and all your smart devices. So once you've found your favorite, that's all you need to make sure that you're using a different password for everything that requires a password. I personally have used LastPass for quite a few years. I use the free version, I've been very happy with it. The link you see on the bottom simply gives you access to a lot more free and paid for password managers. There's quite a few to choose from. This shows you all the things that are part of the free version of Avast. As you can see, it is not a cut down version of an antivirus program. 
Actually, the difference between free and paid in the vast is not the part that protects you because that's the same in all versions. What you're paying for are add-ons, firewall, spam blocker, lots of other goodies. You're paying for the goodies. Protection is exactly the same in free and paid. There's also a version available for those of you that are using a Mac or an Android device. Avast also updates its protection very frequently. Approximately every six minutes, there's a mini update that happens that gives you protection against the newest discovered infections. There are also two major updates per day, and those major updates consolidate the little ones that happen throughout the day. In our competitor's free version, you're lucky if you get one update per day. I've used the free version of Avast since 2003. Back in 2003, I was using Norton, or actually Norton was using my computer and occasionally gave me access. <laughs> That's when I did some research. I stumbled on Avast. It's light on system resources, has done an excellent job of keeping my systems safe and secure. I can honestly say that Avast has made a vast difference on my computers, and it can do the same for you. Avast is faster, smarter, uses artificial intelligence and human genius to keep us safe. Welcome to our online world. Our lives are online. We believe everyone has the right to privacy and security online. So we built the most advanced threat detection network. Combining human genius and the latest in artificial intelligence. Proactively detecting and blocking threats in real time preventing over 1.5 billion cyber attacks each month. Over 400 million users across the globe trust us. However, you connect. Wherever you connect. Protecting your business. Your home. Everywhere you connect, we are Avast, committed to online privacy and security. Why not download and install Avast today? Protection for all the people all over the world. Avast currently has over 435 million users worldwide. It's by far the most used antivirus program worldwide. And if there's an outbreak any place, it doesn't take very long for Avast to know what it is and get protection for that newest, newest infection out to its customers. There's also protection available for those of you on the Mac. It offers real-time protection, full Mac scans, custom scans, security reports, total malware detection, removable drive scans, scheduled scans, and of course, real-time security updates. If you're on an Android device, it needs at least as much protection as your computer. Most of us have more personal information on our smart device than we have on our computers. Avast offers free mobile security, and this is why you should be using it. What are you downloading? It's just a game on an app store. Honey, are you using Avast? It works on your phone, too. It's just a word game. I'm sure it's fine. Hello? Hello? Nice work, Bob. So I got access to all your data, photos and videos, too. What? Yeah, the spyware is sick. And I get every photo we take. Insane, right? No. You should take some more selfies. The lighting in here is great. 
like I was saying, use a vast for your phone too. It protects you against fake apps, phishing, malware, spyware, and ransomware. Did I mention there's even a free version? Unlike those video games you keep buying. Ugh. If you're on your Android device, Avast also has its secure browser available. And on your Android device, it includes a free VPN, which means you're safe even when you're on open or unsecured connections. There's no such thing as a third party antivirus for those of you on an iOS device. If there's an infection or other problem, you get a patch from Apple and that's how you stay safe. Avast Mobile Security for iOS is all about ensuring your online privacy and protecting your personal information from hackers and spies. This requires iOS 10 or higher. The top part shows you what's included in the free version. And if you want to make Avast happy, there's some additional protection that you can purchase and that's listed on the bottom. Nine tips everyone forgets to follow on their smartphones. Lock your device with a passcode. If you can take the phone out of your pocket or out of its pouch and have immediate access, so will the person who finds it if you lose it or the thief who steals it. A passcode will protect you from giving up your information if the average person finds it or steals it passcode alone will not keep the information from a hacker. But the average person, if you've protected it with a passcode, will not get to your information. Avoid suspicious links. Update your software immediately. Use a security app. Use a VPN on all open Wi-Fi networks. Download apps from reputable app stores. Back up your data to the cloud so that if your device is stolen, when you get the new one, at least you'll be able to put the information back on that new device. Enable remote uh, wiping of your phone. If your phone is stolen, a second it comes back online, if remote wiping is enabled, you'll be able to wipe out all the information on that phone, hopefully before a person steals your information. Use a unique password for every account online. Something that I have installed on my smartphone and on all my laptops is called Prey. Once installed, this helps you recover a stolen or lost laptop or smart device. It's available for Mac, Windows, Linux, and all your smart devices. The secret to this one is you need to install it while you still have possession of that device or laptop. Once it's gone, it's too late for this to help you. If you're on a Windows computer, never leave it without locking it. And it's very easy to lock your keyboard. Just simply use the key combination of the Windows key and L for lock. Those two keys together lock your computer. Even if you get company and they start to play with your computer. If it's locked, there isn't anything that they can do to it. To unlock it, you'd use the same thing that you use to unlock your computer when you first start the computer in the morning. Whether that's a password, a passcode, fingerprint, facial recognition, whatever you currently use to unlock your computer, you would use that to unlock if you've locked it with the Windows and L key. The nice thing is when you unlock it, you'll be back to exactly where you were the second you had locked that device, regardless of how many people may have been playing with that computer. Use a password manager. Use two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication means that besides your username and password, they have to send you a numeric or alphanumeric code to your smart device. And until you enter that code into your account, no access to the account. 
It's quite possible that someone will steal your sign-in information. It's highly unlikely that at the same time, they also would have stolen your smart device. And if they don't have the smart device, the code will never get to them. And they won't get to your account. Check your account settings. By default, your operating system and the programs you install usually share as much information as possible. After all, that's how they make their money. It's up to you to go in and make the necessary changes so that you only share what you're comfortable in sharing. Don't be click happy. Just because there's a link in an email or on a website you're visiting doesn't mean you should be clicking on it. Never click on something that you don't know exactly where it's going to take you. Remove personal data and lie. If you're filling out a questionnaire where real information is not necessary, just lie because you'll still get your coupons or whatever else you're after on that questionnaire. And if you have to go back to that site more than once, just remember what those lies are and keep using the same ones. They'll be just as happy with incorrect information. The only time you really need to use real information are sites that require it, like your bank, social security, so on and so forth. There you have to use real information. But in many other places, it does not necessary and you shouldn't give away your information where it's not necessary. If you didn't ask for it, then trash it. That's where it belongs. Something brand new from Avast, it's called Avast Omni. It's a new type of security. It combines hardware and software to, protect, to help protect you wherever you connect and whatever you connect. We've entered a new age of online security. It's no longer just our computers and phones we need to protect. A growing number of things we depend on every day are connecting to the internet. Your smart TV, your thermostat, your cameras, and everything else in your smart home was not built with security in mind, putting your sensitive personal information at risk of being stolen. And in today's fast-moving world of next-generation cyber threats, even your physical safety can be at risk. A different approach to security is needed to protect you and your family in all aspects of your online life. Introducing Avast Omni, a new type of security for your connected life. Avast Omni is easy and all-inclusive. All you need to do is connect the Avast Omni hub to your existing router, install the app, and your entire connected world is now protected from your home and its connected devices to your family everywhere they go. The Omni app gives you full visibility of your smart home, so you can be sure it's safe. If any unusual behavior is detected, you'll receive an alert wherever you are, so potential intruders can be immediately blocked. And Omni protects you outside the home. Avast Omni gives you powerful malware protection for all your portable devices to keep you safe from the latest threats, wherever you connect to the internet. You can't control what's on the internet, but with Avast Omni, you can control how your children use it. Set limits on screen time, block inappropriate content, and get immediate peace of mind with our locator map that sends you alerts when your child reaches their destination safely. Protect your connected world with a vast omni. Security everywhere you connect. Time for a change of pace. Are you looking for a mate? If you are, you're not alone. They're also looking for clean mates. Senior citizens are the nation's leading carriers of AIDS. That's right, AIDS. Hearing aids, band aids, walking aids, medical aids, government aids, and most of all, monetary aids for our kids, grandkids, and great grandkids. Seniors also have a problem with HIV. More and more of my hair is vanishing every single day. Nine little facts I want to share with you. Death is the number one killer in the world. Life is sexually transmitted. Good health is merely the slowest possible rate at which one can die. Life is like a jar of jalapeno peppers. 
what you do today might burn your backside tomorrow. Give a person a fish and you feed them for a day. Teach a person to use the internet and they won't bother you for weeks, months, maybe years. Health nuts are going to feel stupid someday, lying in the hospital, dying of nothing. All of us can take a lesson from the weather. It pays no attention to criticism. In the 60s, people took acid to make the world weird. Now the world is weird and people take Prozac to make it normal. Don't worry about old age. It usually doesn't last that long. I started doing these presentations back in 2010. I've been part of the Avast customer support forum since 2004. That's a voluntary thing, not something we get paid for. I actually don't work for Avast. This is actually an extension of that customer support forum. In 2010, Avast asked me whether I was interested in doing presentations throughout the country. And I have a nice arrangement with Avast. The second I leave home until I get back, they pay every dime of my expenses. If I take my wife with me, they also pay all of her expenses. It's great for somebody who's on Social Security. In this case, the problem is that since the middle of March, there haven't been any expenses because I've been doing everything remotely. And right now, I don't know of too many clubs that are going to be opening up very soon. So I will be continuing to do these things remotely until clubs start going back and doing them in person. Avast has put no limit on it. My traveling is strictly, uh, strictly up to me. But it doesn't make sense to travel and visit a club if the club isn't open. So we will continue remotely for the near foreseeable future. The presentations are designed for the average computer user. If you know of any clubs that would benefit from a presentation, have them contact me and I'll be happy to arrange a program for them. There's never a charge to the club or its members for my services. That's where Avast comes in. If you learned something today, please let Lena at Avast know about it. That's how these presentations can uh, continue. If you didn't like the presentation, it's okay to let her know that also. And that's enough of this sales pitch. The link at the bottom will give you access to most of what we talked about today. Uh, Peter, you're also going to get a follow-up email from me that will contain this link. It will also have a pre-recorded, a link to a pre-recorded presentation that was done at the beginning of the month. Now, you folks are recording yours, so you'll have it. But in case you don't, a pre-recorded presentation will also be made available that it's currently on YouTube. At this time now, I'm more than happy to answer any questions anyone might have. This is Peter. You're welcome to use uh, the hand feature. Uh, we have a lot of people here, so um, it'll be hard to see hands waving. Uh, looks like uh, we got uh, somebody at the meeting room. Yep, you Go need ahead. to unmute you. Need to unmute yourself. Uh, just hit the space bar. Hold down the space bar. There we go. Is that better? Can you yep. hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I'm the. Uh, my name is Martin Arbogy, and uh, I have a name as unpronounceable as yours last name. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm the editor of the uh, uh, DMA newsletter, and um, I get uh, periodic um, articles from a vast. Um, computer and digital security. Uh, I'm wondering, I've, I've uh, emailed Avast and gotten no reply. Um, can I reprint those articles with due credit uh, in our uh, newsletter and uh, even put the copyright notice from Avast? That's fine. Anything Avast shares in their blogs and anything else is perfectly okay to reprint. They're probably yeah. very happy if you do because it'll mean a bigger exposure. Okay, great. Thank okay. you very yep. much. Not we'll, a problem. 
uh, all the other viewers, I'll let you know that you'll be seeing more articles from Avast in future data buses. Bob, the, uh, uh, the data bus is the name of our, uh, our monthly newsletter. It's a web-based. I'd be very happy if you could include me in one of the people getting that. I happen to enjoy newsletters from the clubs. It's, uh, it's online. You're welcome to look at it. Oh, okay. uh, it's available through our website, DMA, the number one dot I, org. I have, yeah, I have your website. Good, good. Uh, there's a newsletter link up at the top. Okay. Yeah. Edwin? All right. So, Bob, on, on VPN applications, I've experienced that there are issues when you're it works fine when you're just surfing the web, but when you have to go to something like your email outlook or go to Gmail or go into your bank, it never works. Your bank, I agree with you because your bank expects you to be in a certain place. And if you choose, choose a location other than where they expect you to be, they're going to balk because they think somebody got a hold of your account and they yeah. will they will block it so, so that's pretty much true with anything that requires a login is what my experience mm, is no not really not really now what i do when when i'm out actually doing presentations uh i file a vacation notice with the bank and i i tell them from here to here i'll be in a certain state and then I choose my VPN to be in that same state. That gives me my VPN while I'm away from home, which is when I really need that VPN. And my bank doesn't balk. Well, I, I'm not specifically indicating bank. It's other things too. I mean, uh, it's my experience. Um, the other question is, how can you block your home IP from people seeing it. You can't. Because you can't. If I if I if I search something on Google, my wife sees it on Facebook. Same okay. IP address. Yeah, it, yeah. We're 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 using the same network IP right. through the ISP. Right. So it's like they're constantly looking at that they're not looking at what we're searching they're looking at the isp ip address yeah but the ip address really doesn't give you anything it's anyone anyone who's using that internet service provider that ip address is part of their addresses you need a burner hotspot and burner laptop <laughs> Actually, if you want to, if you want to be totally, totally safe, don't go on the internet at all. That's the only way to truly be safe. Certain things, certain things, when you're on the internet, you're not going to be able to hide. It's an impossibility. And here in the U.S., we unfortunately don't have a right to privacy. They do in Europe and many other places, but not in the U.S. That's one of the um, presentations that we're looking to get. Is it GLBD or something like that? Is there a privacy program in Europe, I believe? Yes. Is that what it's called? Yeah, but you don't have that same privacy right here in the U.S. And, and if you start getting very privacy conscious after you've been on the Internet for a bunch of years, it's already way, way too late. You've already given away all your information. And even though you may be able to go to a company like Google or Microsoft and say, hey, erase all of my stuff, you still aren't safe because your information has been copied a million different times. You can get it erased at the source, but you won't be able to erase the copies. Ask, ask ex-Congressman Wiener. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions from the group? I have a few. Um, if not, I'll go ahead with a couple of mine, and then if anybody would like to speak up, 
with their questions, just raise a hand in the uh, product or uh, 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 come up to the uh, camera at uh, TJ Chums. Um, uh, Bob, uh, uh, in the past, I've had conflictions with Avast and other apps. Um, I believe in having two, if possible, having two uh, antivirus apps on my computer, and Avast doesn't seem to like that, or in the past, it hasn't liked that. Nobody does. One resident antivirus program. You never have two. Never have because two. they both try to access the same thing at the same time, and then they own your computer, and you have no control whatsoever. Okay, you can only have one resident antivirus program at a time. Well, there were also other conflictions with the vast and other applications. Uh, I assume that sort of thing is corrected all the time. And this is many years ago. Yep. Where I use a vast. So uh, the, there seems to be, I mean, this is, uh, um, I've seen presentations on a vast in the past. And, uh, and this one is, uh, they, they've, they've grown a lot. Their, their product has grown a lot. And very nice. Um, the uh, you showed quite a few of the Avast uh, features. Um, were all of those features that you, you know, earlier on in the presentation you said your, uh, your favorite uh, Avast product is uh, is the free one? But uh, yep. the were all of those part of the free product, or were there uh, some of those that were paid? Uh, you, the parts, well, the ones that that were paid, the VPN, for instance. I say that that's a paid product. Sure. What I showed you on the other one, those are parts of the free product. Oh, nice, nice, very nice. Okay, um, the Avast Mobile Security, is that part of the same package uh, or is that a separate paid package? No, that's a free product, but it's for your mobile device. Okay, so you can get free on- Android on, device, yeah. You can get free for tablets and PCs and, uh, and uh, mobile devices as well. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, personally, if you have an an an, uh, an Android or a Chrome book, you really don't need any protection on it. That's good to know. Because on your Chrome book, if something happens to it, you just it's built into the Chrome operating system. You can wipe the slate, stink the clean, and start over again. Okay. Um, I'm uh, looking to uh, to help a, a friend with their computer, and I, I'd like to get a. Uh, and this may not be an Avast a vast product, but I'd like to get a plug-in antivirus program, something I can just plug in and have it run and and uh, check it out to uh, see if um, uh, before I cause before there's any other problems. In other words, clean slate. Uh, is there anything that you can uh, recommend or does Avast offer something like that? No, no such thing. No your, such antivirus, thing. your antivirus program is the closest thing to a virus that there is without being a virus because it needs access to every part of your computer in order to protect every part of your computer. So it, it has control of every part of your computer and that can be a plug in and plug out. So there's, so there's nothing... Not I can install on a USB drive. Not that would be not not anything that would be a full blown antivirus. No. Got it. Okay. You can have things that are on demand. You ask it to check something, but it's not it's not something that's constantly there, and prevents things from getting to you. That's always after the fact. So to be fully effective, it really needs to be. It needs to be installed. fully engaged. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions from the group? I don't see anything. Okay, when, so when can when can I download oh. this? Uh, when, when can I download this presentation from DMA? This should be uh, uh, well. Talk to Edwin. He's uh, there at uh, TJ Chumps, but I would say probably the weekend. Uh, that's how that's how we've been doing it in the past. We've can I ask how many? The the weekend. Can I ask how many people you have physically at TJ Chumps? Uh, 
Uh, we're not hearing anything. You're muted. Edwin, you're muted. Okay, here. What did you, what'd you say? Uh, how many how many people there uh, present uh, in, uh, at TJ Chumps? Eight people here. Okay, Eight people thank there? you. Okay. All right, this, this is a nice little meeting. Yep. All right. Good. Any, uh, One any other? Question. Okay. One question I have, because uh, I thought I heard you mentioning malware bytes. Mm -hmm. uh, you're using that in conjunction with the vast, right? Yeah, but I use I use malware bytes on an on-demand basis. Once a month, I run malware bytes, just okay. as a second opinion. It hasn't found anything in eons, but I just run it as a second opinion once okay. a month. Okay. Well, I run mine regularly. I don't use a vast, and I also, uh, you know, I'm using um, just the regular uh, Windows Defender stuff, and it. I really don't have any problems usually, but it, malware bytes does catch stuff when I'm using it regularly because occasionally I'll hit something that I shouldn't. It sort of gets, says, I, you know, I'm redirecting you away from this website, or it won't let me go, or something like that. Yeah, we're using Avast. Avast would be doing the same thing. Right. Now, is there any conflict between Malwarebytes and Avast? If, uh... if, you, if you have it installed, a resident, yes, there are exceptions that you have to make for both. Avast has to have exceptions for Malwarebytes, and Malwarebytes needs to have some exceptions for Avast. And you'll find those exceptions listed on both Malwarebytes on their site their user form, and you'll also find it on the Avast customer user form. I use CCleaner. Uh, did I hear that that was uh, owned by Avast? Yep. It is, okay. Yep. Yeah. Is Avast, that... Avast owns Piriform. Yeah. They purchased Piriform about a year ago. Uh, so, Peter, if you read now, if you read the data of... regularly, you would have known that. <laughs> And the also owns <laughs> ABG. Correct. The hood at an ABG antivirus program, and there is an Avast engine underneath it. Well, it has a combination of the two. The best parts of AVG and Avast are combined, and that's what both of us have. The difference between Avast and AVG is the user interface. Yes. If, if you're using Avast, you have its inter user interface. And if you're using AVG, you are used to their interface. But the protection part's the same in both. It's a marriage of the two. Now, the Windows Defender, uh, how, how good is that? I'm not here to criticize or praise somebody else's. I'm simply telling you what I use and why I use it. I'm on Windows 10, latest version, but I use Avast. And Defender is the only one that you don't have to uninstall because Defender automatically turns itself off when you install any third-party antivirus. It also turns itself off if you install Malwarebytes. Mm -hmm. You can reactivate it once malware bytes is installed. Part of it, yes. Not all of it. Right, right. They do not work together very easily. Right. All right. If there's not any other uh, comments, that's, uh, that's about an hour presentation. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, you're going to be stay with us and feel free yeah. to pitch in. If uh, you have any comments, I'll go ahead with the uh, uh, the uh, the regular reports. Meeting's yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, 